Testing, testing. Gnomes in space. Space, space. All right, welcome to the second edition of the Contributor Technical Discussions. This is the December 16th edition. Uh, let's get right down to demos. Uh, so territory, GitHub verify. Do you want to share your screen? Uh, we are waiting, uh, Miguel. I think Miguel is late, so maybe we can uh, go after all the guys. All right. In that case, uh, on block with no swap governance demo. All right. Um, can I share my screen? Yeah, sure. As you say, I'm here, but <clears throat> sorry, I didn't hear it. No problem. After Dong Won and the Unlock team, we'll circle back to you. Um, do you see my screen? Yes. Yep. Um, this is uh, our um, DevNet. And um, today uh, I'm going to um, demo our uh, Gnosis governance feature. Um, yeah, um, this is the uh, this is the front page of uh, the Gnosis governance, and uh, Gnosis governance is run by uh, XGNS, uh, which is um, a non-transferable governance token with the uh, issuance ratio of uh, one to one. With GNS, so if you uh, stay, if you um, delegate uh, 100 GNS, you will get uh, 100 X GNS. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, here um, you can um, delegate your uh, GNS. Let's um, you can delegate your GNS. Uh, you can self delegate, or you can choose uh, other um, delegators. But we don't have any. Um, other um, delegators for now. So let's try with um, purpose. And um, this is um, the XGNS that I have right now. And um, this 5000 XGNS is what I'm um, going to get. And this is a worrying power share uh, change. Yeah, so um, as you can see here, uh, 5,000 uh, GNS is um, newly, has been newly uh, added. And now I have uh, 11,000 X GNS. And um, yeah, you can actually uh, create a proposal in the uh, front end page. Uh, we have uh, three types of proposals, which are um, text proposal, community pool spend, and parameter change. And um, we can um, try to um, send a GNS to a random address from our uh, community pool. So um, yeah, we can try it with this address. Um, no live test. So as you can see, there's no uh, GNS in this uh, in this account, and um, let's try to um, send uh, some GNS to that address. Uh, so before uh, before I try it, um, there are uh, these are available. Uh, these are gonna of problems that can be um, modified by uh, the governance. So as you can see here, uh, we have community pool emission GNS governance pool, protocol fee, router, staker, and each realm has um, functions. And um, every uh, function takes um, different uh, argument or parameters. And, um, now we can try uh, this. This takes um, three parameters. Uh, first one is uh, token path. So, 
and um, the address. And we can send. It's a one genus, and we can send. We can try a uh, thousand. Let's try uh, seven thousand. Uh, seven thousand genus. Um, yeah. Right. I get the proposal list up. And um, once um, we wait a little bit, uh, by the way, all the um, uh, parameters, uh, the, the time has been uh, shortened because of the uh, testing purposes. Um, yeah, it's now active, so we can um, Vote for yes here. Well, maybe the voting ended. That's why it's not allowing you. Oh, yeah, um, the time has already passed. Um, demo issue yeah by the way um if we um go to um this um on chain uh it was um yeah the proposal was submitted uh, a minute ago and um yeah as you can see here um um yeah this was put uh, on chain but um i think uh, yeah the vote uh, didn't go through because uh, yeah the proposal was ended before uh, we voted. Yep. Yeah, un unsuccessful demo, but uh, yeah, so this was um, our uh, governance feature. And for realms and parameters, do they need to be uh, configured beforehand? Yeah, these were um, uh, already um, these these realms were are, are have been already deployed, and uh, all the functions have been set. So uh, we know uh, which realm and which function that uh, we're going to um, put on on chain for governance. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, and. Um, for the um, parameters for governance are uh, configurable. So as you can see here, uh, yeah, these are the original um, time that we have for our governance, but all the uh, time have been uh, shortened for testing purposes for now. Yeah, um, and uh, our volumes are, uh, I think I've, uh, yeah, updated here. So you can um, check it out, the realm source. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for the great demo. If there are no questions, we can circle back uh, to territory. That was just a quick question. Uh, that one, when you were showing the, the UI page, um, there was like a pop-up that happened um, that said updating page or something like that, refreshing page. Um, yeah. I'm just curious, how does how does that work? Um, so uh, I think uh, Gino is the uh, Gino is the best person to ask, but um, he um, made a modification in Adena that uh, uh, broadcast sync method. That's uh, what uh, he's um, using for uh, Adena and GNOME swap for these UIs. Huh, huh, cool, cool. So create a, a hook for the broadcast. Cool, cool. Yep.
Okay, Miguel. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Can verify. Uh, yes. Uh, so to give you some context, I imagine you all have the context, but anyway, uh, the idea is to build a ring that will verify that you are owner of a GitHub account. So we territories are working on this. Um, I mean, there is already a RIM, a RIM uh, contract that does that, but we just added like a new publish event um, because we need it for our indexer and our agent to work it. So I just going to do a quick demo on Genodev. Um, after that, it's already running on test four, but on my own contract. So yeah, we will we will demo that. So first thing I just gonna I let me know if you you are able to see correctly. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to launch Genodev. Um, also, I'm going to launch my own local indexer um so it will be something like this uh, like on the documentation so now i have my indexer running locally um uh, with all that i'm going to deploy my own contract of the uh, eh verify i have all the commands here so first thing I'm going to do is just deploy the contract. Uh, so just going to do this quick. Uh, so right now I just deployed my contract. Um, now I'm going to request a verification. Um, the verification is over my GitHub handle that, it, that is Villaquilan M. Uh, so as soon as I've, I request the verification, um, the next step I'm going to do is to um, give my agent, my agent is right here, uh, running locally also, I'm going to give the privileges to modify or I'm just going to whitelist him in order to push values on my contract. So this is the First thing I'm going to do is just going to set my agent. As a valid pusher. Um, right now, my Genodev has all the events. Uh, for example, I just received the event of request verification right there. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is just to execute my agent locally. Um, I'm just going to, uh, before that, I'm going to show you that we don't have anything on Genodev. Uh, I don't know if I have it here. Sorry, give me a moment. Uh, so if I go in here, I can go to Josh Verify. There is no user there. Um, so now I'm going to verify myself. Um, okay, so what, what this is doing is um, the, the, this agent is going to going through all the events that are indexer index that are indexed by the indexer. Um, then one by one, he's trying to reach for my GitHub account, Bijakiran M. If if I go into my account, it's right here. So um, to, in in order to verify an account, uh, you must prove that you have ownership. So the idea to do that, um, the mechanism is to place your address right here. Right now, is this like a simple mechanism, but we can improve it in the in the future. So as soon as I, um, the agent receives the verification, it goes to download on my repo uh, the, the address. And if it corresponds to the address I put on the event, I mean, the, the verification I did uh, just before, um, 
it will contact the GH verified realm in order to tell, tell him like, uh, uh, yes, this user is verified. And um, right now you have, I, I get verified and that is my address. Um, this is currently running also on, on test four, um, but under my own, under my own um, name, namespace. Um, so if I go to test four, uh, there is, for example, Norman that is already here. Um, we deploy this agent on on our servers. Uh, we still have some work in, some work to do and some planning to do, but it's already operational. Um, so this is in order to launch the discussion if we need to improve some features about this. But uh, the idea is that we we want to start working on this. I don't know if you have some questions. It's all on my side. Is there any chance for somebody to spoof the verification? Because I see you're using a, a publicly uh, available address. I mean, you, you mean like take your, um, take the address and place it in the, in his repository? Yeah. I mean, yes, that could be possible on the state, but that means the user want like my wallet to be owners of his GitHub handle. I don't know if that is something we will, someone will, uh, but we we are planning on improving that part of the of the verification also. Yes, I think uh, it is not possible because we are going to, uh, when a user do a request of verification, we are going to, uh, it is a, this kind of proof of ownership of this address. And we are going to check if this address correspond uh, the address that we put in the GitHub account. I mean, it's technical, technically it's possible, in my opinion, but uh, the attacker will just tell like uh, uh, this address is owner of, of my account. It won't be. It won't be uh, owner of um, of the account of someone else. Yeah, um, that's okay. I was just thinking out loud. There's no practical reason for anybody to do this. Uh, Nathan, you had a question. Nathan, are you there? We can't hear you if you're saying something. Uh, yeah, if you change your GitHub username, uh, we already start thinking of that. That is a great question. Uh, so right now we are going, to, uh, we have the handle of the GitHub account, but probably we will I need to store the some internal ID of the GitHub account like that. If you change your username, you still have like the, the account, the right account that is linked to to your wallet. Yes, I think in the future we are using uh, the username, but it is temporary. We are going to switch in the uh, GitHub ID uh, after that. So we are uh, not using uh, the GitHub user name anymore, but we are used to using maybe for the printing, but it, we will not use it uh, for the ID. Got it. Manfred, you had a question. Uh, I think it was not 
look at uh, GitHub ID. If you just look at the username, uh, you can maybe rename and then create a new GitHub account. And so finally, the account ID will be different, etc. What you should basically do is you initiate a uh, verification by creating your public GNU address on GitHub and then by making a, a transaction on chain to, to give a GitHub handle. Your system knows that basically on GNU and on GitHub, you are you agree with yourself, basically. And the thing you should do is to periodically check if uh, so the thing that can change is must be GitHub, because then you can maybe just subscribe on a, on a, on an event from from Git, uh, from from GNU point of view. So basically, you need to, to verify regularly. And once the address is not the same anymore, you just uh, mark the verification as failed, which is to be the same state as an unfinished verification. But basically, I think you, it's not your business to manage uh, a rename or whatever, or maybe a username that transforms into an organization. Another good example. Your goal is just to uh, allow someone to set up a first verification and then to periodically check if the URL is still giving the same address. The, I really want this system to not only work with users, but also for organization, both on GitHub and on GNU. So in practice, uh, yeah, it just makes sense that you, you should consider that a user can switch to an organization in, in, in the two locations. So make a system that verify. Right now it's GitHub, but tomorrow it can be Twitter or another system. That regu uh, last check was made, I don't know, uh, two weeks ago. And regularly you check. And when you check if it's broken, the verification fail, and that's all. OK. This link, this, link is, this link is mostly uh, an information, and then it will probably be used also for some kind of GitHub airdrop. Uh, for GitHub airdrop, we need to verify uh, not only the username, because else you can just rename your account several times. You, we need to verify both uh, also the uniqueness of the of the GitHub of the of the GNU address. GitHub should prevent creating too many new accounts uh, because they just verify they moderate creation of accounts. So if we just say the account needs to be I don't know three months old, at least we should prevent people to create so many GitHub uh, accounts. So we need to find things like this. Maybe this is the place where the account ID could make sense to be stored. Uh, for for the airdrop, but for the link itself, just consider this case of uh, making the relationship between a between a username uh, a GNO STD address and a GNO and a GitHub handle. In practice, since we can switch from user to organization, the real thing to verify if it's the uh, verification is still working two weeks after. But it could make sense that you provide the account ID uh, as a metadata on chain on GNO. For airdrops or other things. Okay, that that makes sense. We also had a question from Nathan in the chat. Would it be better to have a signed claim from GNOLAND that is put in your GitHub account so that you, you can verify that a signed transaction from the origin account that says I verified that I want to associate this account with GitHub? Just a thought, you don't have to answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> OK, because uh, I'm not sure I understand like uh, everything. OK, that's, uh, that's, that's exactly what the, the, the RAM is doing. I think I verify that I want to associate his account. We're making a transaction. Transaction involves a signature. Uh, so right now, we don't use cryptography and signatures on GitHub. But since you make a transaction using a private key on GNU, you have something similar. So the question is, do we want to have a signature also on GitHub? We want to have two, two signatures. It's something possible. I think it makes the process harder. We need to document, but we can maybe just uh, give uh, a single command you run on your on your on your terminal, and it, it could be okay. Yes, we think uh, about that. Yes, we need uh, some kind of front end uh, or some kind of something more easy to sign a file or sign a some text to do it. The thing but, I dislike with this approach is we can't do it for organizations. An organization is something where uh, basically a, um, 
we can expect, for instance, air slash core team slash home at the initialization to import uh, GH verify and to call something. So basically, the realm is uh, registering itself, so its namespace for a GitHub organization. So we can register an organization without a private key. But still, we signature in terms of uh, of uh, the blockchain protects it. And basically, someone in the DAO, someone in the organization made a transaction, a signed one, and is a member. So basically, he, had, uh, he or she had an option to, to write a new contract with initialization code. So just consider that an organization uh, making a verification won't have a private key. It will still be protected by cryptography, by signatures, but not by the organization itself, but by a member. So I think we should limit to, to just making a transaction. The transaction either call JH verify directly as a user or the transaction uh, add a new package or call a special method on your organization realm that will call JH verify to register the organization itself. And by doing this, we can have organization registering themselves. And then, the, yeah, the, uh, on, on GitHub, we just put the public address or the, maybe the realm address in the case of an, an organization. We will have both, but may, maybe the package added there is uh, more readable. Or maybe both. Maybe we could have a JSON and we have the address with the address when we have it. And we have the, the, on the, the GNO handle, the GNO username. But yeah, think about organizations, please. And okay. teams. Thanks. All right, we're making good time. We're at the 30 minute mark. Uh, let's switch to discussions. Um, Brady, uh, I assume Jeff, you want to ask this question. Um, we we want to use the opportunity that Ray is on the call, so he might give us some extra context. All right. Um, Actually, there was just some activity on some of these issues in the last three hours. Uh, one of the features we want for uh, Gnoki Mobile uh, is to, before someone authorizes the transactions, to give them an estimate of how much gas it's going to cost. And we've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, just uh, <clears throat> curious if there's an update on... I, I saw there was a new uh, comment from Manfred, which is for the launch, maybe the gas fee doesn't need to be perfect, but it, it just needs to be something that's supported. Um, I'm just we're just curious on a on an update on on a uh, a path to to getting some kind of gas fee estimate. And the related thing is um, I link to an issue uh, which is the uh, uh, this is well known too. Like if you're in Gnoki, and it tells you uh, how much gas the transaction used, um, it's kind of unrelated to how much how many coins are deleted from your account. So, uh, um, but I think the gas estimation is more important, and lots of people are thinking about it. Just curious if anybody has comments on where we are. Um. So there's um, there's a wider uh, sort of um, thing about uh, calculating gas and gas fees, which is being tackled by Ray. And I think he opened up the microphone. I'll let him talk about that. I just wanted to say that um, there is a mechanism where you can um, uh, you can you can sort of estimate the amount of the both the gas fee and the gas used. Maybe not the gas fee, but um, uh, definitely the gas used. Um, and uh, you can see it being used in uh, the Gnocchi CLI because right now when you do a transaction, um, the default behavior is that we test the we test the transaction first using simulation and then we run um, we run the actual transaction um by sending it to the chain but so we do a first round of well uh, like which just simulates the transaction and if it fails like say for for a bug then the error is returned right away um i think you can use that mechanism um yourselves 
and you can use it to like pass in, uh, say, you know, 10 million gas, uh, gas wanted, and uh, then get back the amount of gas used and use that as a baseline for the actual transaction, maybe increase it by, I don't know, 10%. Um, so that's for what concerns the gas used. Uh, I think the gas fee will be, you know, a variable on the gas, like a multiplier on the gas used. Um, uh, if I recall from the when, when I read the PR, but I'll let Ray comment on that. Yeah. Okay. So Jeff, what uh, happened is that I think we're ready to um, put the gas fee. Um, you know that you know put the the parameter that associated with the uh, both opcodes and um, uh, storage access in place. Uh, we just need um, um, some. Take a look at the. There is a, a PR for um, for um, what do you call it? the uh, the benchmark. You know we have a uh, the benchmark uh, numbers out there. Um, basically, we just want to do a you know, internally do some kind of review before we put those numbers in place. Um, I think those are ready, ready to be put in place. Yeah. OK. Um, when you have time, can you send me the PR number or us? <clears throat> Just take it in the chat. Uh, yep, that's fine. All right, well, that's something to watch. Um, we'll do that. All right, and second topic, uh, Onblock, Youngjun. Oh yeah, yeah. When when fetching the data by using the ABCR query, it seems that <clears throat> it seems that uh, although the current request query type includes the height, but the current implementation doesn't appear to this director use this value to fetch uh, data when looking into the implementation of ABCR qu ABC query, especially a query function. So. My question is: Is it possible to change, change, change this function to use other fields such as height or uh, on other fields? And if so, whether a separate prefix needs to be added to get a data from DV? Thank you. Oh, I didn't share my screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do you want to share your screen now? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the this is the uh, query function, which is uh, connected with the uh, ABC query function. So the it takes a uh, uh, request query type it contains a uh, height and proof, proof, but as far as I know, it only used um, only the data field to retrieve the data from the DV. So, yeah. Hmm. So, so, what's the question? So the question is. <clears throat> so the question is it. It's possible to change the to use other fields, fields uh, like a, a height or proof uh, rather than the data in here. Hmm. Let me check the, the heck MD. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you're you're asking whether or not you can change the key that we use for fetching from the key uh, key value store, right? Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. So you can prefix it with a height. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, huh. 
I'm not sure if this is going to have any kind of side effect I'd expect it to, to have. Yeah, I also the concerning the side effects if I change this function. Because yeah, but by default, I think it's always going to fetch the latest, right? So you're because we're not pre prefixing anything. Mm -hmm, I see. So yeah, um, I'd say I'd say probably just make a PR. This is definitely going to be a breaking change, but I think at this point it's it's completely fine because you know for most of our networks we're just going to reinitialize the the state again. Um, I think we have an ongoing issue for how we want to version version data. Um, it's by by Antonio somewhere. And I think one of the one of the suggestions that we have there is to version something by um, not just by version, but also by by the height. Um, I'll try to dig up the issues if we can. But yeah, um, the the short term answer is, yeah, you, you can definitely just make a PR and we'll check it out, uh, but just just label it probably as, as a breaking change. Oh, yeah, good, good. I see. Thank you. <laughs> also, also just um, because you're changing the getters, also also check the 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 setter functions for for the for the mm -hmm. data. Okay, I'll take it in my mind. <laughs> Thank you for answering. All right, that's all from the agenda. Uh, before you have the opportunity to pitch an ad hoc discussion topic, I just want to. Uh, let you guys know that we've been cleaning up uh, GitHub a bit, and for the mainnet launch, we've actually set up a milestone that captures all the mandatory work uh, to launch the mainnet. So if you're looking for new ways to contribute, uh, take a look at uh, those issues and reach out to us if you want to tackle some of them. There's some easy issues, there's some hard issues there, so I think uh, you'll find uh, something for everyone. Does anybody have any ad hoc topics they want to discuss? Jeff. You're muted, Jeff. Uh, I always do that. Um, uh, in the chat, asking Ray if I found the right PR for what he was talking about with the, uh, uh, to, to follow about the benchmarking. Ray, is that the right one? Maybe he's offline. Uh, yeah, I just muted, sorry. Yeah, yes, that's the right one. 3241, beautiful, thank you, that's it. All right, I guess everybody gets 18 minutes of your time back. Enjoy life, travel, start a family, and we'll see each other in two weeks. Toodaloo. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.